And I want to just take a couple of moments to talk about generic concerta, and then we'll wrap up. Heidi mentioned that this has happened. This has been a, uh, a point for advocacy and work within CADAC. And I want to make sure that you understand some of the facts here. So Concerta is the medicine I showed earlier. It's a pill that's got a lot of research in it. it. takes three weeks to make every pill. They actually have a laser that drills a hole in every single capsule before the medicine's put into it, et cetera. Or actually, the, I don't know if it's before or after the medicine. In any case, lots of technology in that little pill. Uh, and this is just a schematic to show you. If The black line is the blood concentration of Ritalin three times a day, so it peaks and drops, take a pill at lunch, it peaks and drops, take a pill at 4 o'clock, peaks and drops. The Concerta tablet... Uh, this is a fancier drawing than what I had on the previous slide. But essentially, when you take it, there's a, 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 an ascending curve. For the first six hours or so, the concentration of concern is gradually rising, and then it levels out and comes down, which gives about 12 hours of symptom control. And the reason they created that ascending curve is because of research that showed in an analog classroom, kids sitting in a classroom being observed and getting blood tests and medicine every half hour, that when they had an ascending profile, that the concentration at 11 o'clock was higher than the concentration at 10 o'clock, et cetera, that they got the best response possible from the most number of individuals. So they created the technology to create this ascending profile within this high-tech pill. If we look at Ritalin slow release, which is essentially methylphenidate with a capsule around it, or like an enteric coating around it, what you get is you get sort of a peak and a drop off after about three hours or so. If we look at Concerta, we get this ascending curve gradually. Now, you see, part of what happens for a generic medicine to get approved, and, and as Heidi said, I'm not against generic medicines. In fact, it's fantastic if people who couldn't afford the expensive ones can get the generic, right? As long as it works okay. The pro my concern is the generic Concerta, so-called generic Concerta, um, you know, the Novo Methylphenidate ERC does not have the same characteristics of Concerta. They've been very smart in trying to grab some market share from an established medicine. Their medicine doesn't work the same way. And what happens is they get the peak early and then it drops off, and I don't think they have the same support or, you know, the same help or benefit. They've essentially, from all we can see, they've taken methylphenidate, put an extended release capsule or, you know, coating around it, and called it Concerta. They made it at the same strengths, 18, 27, 36, and 54, and they've, they're lobbying government to have it become interchangeable. So you could take your Concerta prescription from your doctor. You may have spent a year or two trying to find the right medicine at the right dose. You now have it. You take it to the doctor, to the pharmacy, and the pharmacy automatic subs automatically substitutes the other stuff that doesn't work for you, and boom, your symptom control goes down the toilet. This is why I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about it, so you're aware of what's going on, you know the questions to ask, and you can take that back to your community. So uh, essentially, for the point I wanted to make sure to make, sorry, with this is the area, to, to have something be deemed equivalent, it has to have 80 to 120 percent bioequivalence, meaning the same amount of medicine absorbed. What they've been able to do, the generic makers, basically say that the area under the curve that is the total amount of medicine exposed to the individual through the course of the day. And if you look at the area under the curve for the, you know, the new medicine compared to the Concerta, it's the same. The difference is the rate at which it's delivered and the technology of how it's delivered is quite different. So for many people, my concern is this will lead to worse symptom control. Uh, you know, this basically just shows that Concerta... Uh, this is the novel methylphenidate ERC in fed conditions. When it's taken, it peaks at 4.6 hours. Concerta peaks at 8 hours. If it's fasting, it peaks at 3.1, the generic, and Concerta peaks at 7 hours. That's just not going to last as long into the day. That's not going to last till homework, whereas Concerta can. Now, I've got a blog on ADHD, and um, I get a lot of people who post comments. I get a lot of traffic to this blog. I put this in your slide deck because it, it describes one person's experience with Adderall, generic Adderall XR in the U.S., complaining about how awful Sleepless in Seattle feels with this generic Adderall. Last week, I took the liberty of adding in a comment that came in onto my blog on April 17th um, that on the generic Concerta. So I'll just take a moment and read it to you. I'm 55 years old, was on the original Concerta, and doing quite fine. I just want to tell you, I just copied and pasted, right? This is not edited in any way, shape, or form. So I was on Concerta and doing quite fine. Now, since the 7th of April, my pharmacist switched me to the generic. And right now, I would like to rip someone's head off and do something nasty down their throat. 
You have no idea of the thoughts that have been going through my mind since the new drug has been applied. I can no longer sleep at night. I cannot concentrate on anything. In short, I would like to jump off a bridge because I no longer feel normal or in total control. What gives these people the right to screw around with my life without telling me about it? Now you know the other side of the story. This new generic sucks and does not work as well as the original Concerta. So that was posted on April 17th on my blog. You know, is everybody going to have this reaction? I hope not. But I want you guys to be aware of the potential risks with this medicine. We talked about the potential for abuse and diversion and misuse of the medicines. And I told you, the old medicines could be crushed up and snorted, and that can make them more abusable. The newer medicines, they're much harder to crush. On this slide, we've got the generic here and the Concerta here. When they're crushed, this is what happens. The Concerta, you can see they've got these little compartments, right? There's the polymer, there's the capsule, there's it's kind of like a, a gooey nest type of thing. With the novel methylphenidate, it's just a powder. It's just, there's no tech in it. It's just the methylphenidate with a little coating around it. So there's much more risk about the abuse potential as well. Yeah? So Right, so the question is, if you get a, a prescription from the doctor that says Concerta, as of today, as of yesterday, please make sure the doctor writes no substitution. Okay? Now, I, as a busy doc, it may sound absurd, but the idea of writing no substitution, I'm so busy, I figured, let me get a stamp. Won't work. It has to be in my handwriting if I write it on a prescription. Same with every doctor. If it's put with a stamp, the pharmacist can ignore it because it doesn't look like the doctor really meant it. So, so the doctor can just write no sub, N-O-S-U-B, and that will cover it, but it's got to have no substitution on it. Um, well, let me just go through this, and we'll get right to it. So is, is it the same 80 to 120%, not necessarily the same absorption profile? Can you control what you get? Can you make sure you get the name brand Concerta? Maybe, but maybe not. And this will depend on your insurance, the Ontario Drug Benefit Card, and what your pharmacy carries. Uh, now, some of you may have seen in the news that our government is attacking the generic companies and trying to stop their kickbacks to the pharmacies, and if you're, I, I won't go into that whole issue, that may de-incentivize some of the pharmacies from carrying some of the generics, but they may still happen. Um, so how the doctor writes the prescription has to say no substitution. So the other thing is just watch really carefully. If you're getting a pill bottle and it says Novo anything, and it's supposed to be your concerted prescription, you know that it's not the right medicine. If it looks a little different, it's the same color, they're roughly the same size, but it looks different, check. Or if you don't notice these things and all of a sudden the medicine doesn't, doesn't seem to be working anymore, check. Talk to the doctor, talk to the pharmacist. Now this is particularly important, and these are the new slides that aren't in your deck, because as of yesterday, the Ontario Drug Benefit deemed it interchangeable. That means that the Ontario Drug Benefit decided that for anybody on the Ontario Drug Card, they'd rather save the money and, you know, they, hey, the costs are real, right? That said, the, the treatment issues are tremendously real as well, which I know everybody in this room knows. So they've established interchangeability. What this means is, if I write a prescription for Concerta, for anybody in my office who's covered by the Ontario drug card, when they go to fill that prescription, the pharmacist will automatically have to substitute for the generic medicine at the equivalent dose. Now, I don't like this. And you shouldn't like this. Uh, when it comes to anybody covered under private insurance or if you pay cash, you can just say, give me the, the private insurers as of now do not do automatic substitution. Though this is what we have to watch for and hope doesn't happen and hopefully advocate for. So what's happened is Jansen Ortho, who is the maker of Concerta and has been a big advocate of educational events and helped to support our community, they've stepped up and created a program which is called the Concerta Copay Assist Program. So I just want to take a moment and share this with you. Uh, the details is that this program will pay the difference between the brand name Concerta and the Novo Methylphenidate ADRC. So if you are on the, on the Ontario Drug Benefit or you know anybody or work with anybody who is, if they are going to go to the pharmacy, the doctor has to write Concerta no substitution and hopefully they get this card either at the doctor's office or at the pharmacy. They hand it and the pharmacist says, I got to give you the generic. You say, no thank you, I want the brand name. And please use this card to pay for the difference, and it'll be cost neutral to the patient. That's what Janssen Ortho has put in place on very fast turnaround time. So if the generic cost is $89 and Concerta is $124, the copay will cover the difference of $34.20. That's this program that's just been pulled together. Yeah? Well, if you don't have a drug plan, drug, excuse me, drug plan, 
then I don't think that the Concerta program is set up to cover the cost difference. You'd, you'd be paying cash for it and it wouldn't change. So you, your pharmacist may offer you the generic to save money and you could choose to take the generic or you could choose to take the brand name. Uh, the thing we don't know enough about because we don't have a lot of clinical trials is, does this new one work for people? Uh, based on everything I've seen, I, don't, I know it's not the same as Concerta. It may help some people, I don't know, but I'm not going to use it that much because I, I, I don't trust it yet, yes? That's what we're talking about. This is the drug card for people with social assistance. So anybody on social assistance, Ontario disability, um, you know, any kids with assistance for children with severe disabilities, they get the Ontario drug card that they leave at their pharmacy, and this, these, this is the program that will help them to stay on the brand name Concerta. Uh, so the, the prescription has to be accompanied with this copay card, and the pharmacist puts it in the system so the person doesn't pay. People should ideally keep their card with them because it's a multi-use card. How do you get these cards? The company will be sending them directly to pharmacies and they will also be dropping them off with physicians' offices. So if by chance you go back to your doctor next, excuse me, next week and you, you know, you're in this situation and your doctor doesn't have the cards, say I want to get it at the pharmacy or ask the doctor to call, call his representative from the company to get one of these cards. This is just a picture of the card. Uh, it looks like this, it folds in half and it's a multi-use patient copay assist program. That's the card that will pay the difference for people. All right, so I've put a couple of things about the advisories. We've, we've hit those a couple of times. Uh, I do have a newsletter you can see on my website. I am on Twitter if you want to follow that. And I've got a resource table upstairs with a few uh, educational resources for people, and I'd be happy to stay around and answer questions. And thank you.